Hi, so in this example, we're going to go ahead and be given the base of an object and find the volume of that object by using the cross section of a right isosceles triangle. So here we can see that our cross sections are isosceles right triangles where the hypotenuse is laying on the base. So if we go ahead and take a look at an isosceles right triangle, we do see it will look something like that. It's a right triangle in which two sides are the same, which makes their base angles also the same. So here, these angles are also going to be the same. Okay, so because it's a right triangle, it's 90 degrees, and we can see that it'll be 45 and 45. So we'll have A here and A here, and because those sides are equal, and H for hypotenuse will be there. So this hypotenuse H here is lying as the cross sections, and then this is like the A and the A, right? So this is H, A, A. That's how they're lying down, okay? The area of this cross section is, well, just the area of a triangle, one half base times height. However, what's really nice about this particular triangle is that the two sides are equal. So here, the base, which is A, H, which is also A, this becomes A, the area is equal to one half a times a, right? Which means that it'll be one half a squared. So you can see that there. However, we are not, we don't know much about those sides. If I'm drawing those isosceles right triangles like this, and this is a and a, and this is h, I don't really know much about these sides here or how to calculate those lengths for an infinite amount, right? Because I'm doing a definite integral, right? But I do know the hypotenuse length, it's along this these lines, right? And then same thing on the constant function there, right? You could see that, oh yeah, I do have some boundary and I know what these equations are. So in that case, Let's go ahead and rewrite this area formula in terms of the hypotenuse, right? Because I know that the hypotenuse will be along this line here and then on the other line, and I don't know much about the height or the, the size of those A's, the length of those A's, let's go ahead and rewrite in terms of H. Now, I'm gonna have to bring in one more thing and then I can go ahead and rewrite my area formula in terms of H instead of A. Um, this is a really nice triangle to use. It's a right triangle, and the first thing I think of is Pythagorean Theorem. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Pythagorean Theorem to actually find a formula in which I can put in for H. So I do know that the sides, the sum of the sides squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared, right? So that's just taking my two sides and then the H. Well, because my base and my height are the same, I get a squared plus a squared, which is two a squares equals h squared. And then I can divide each side by two and get h squared over two. And therefore, a can be equal to the square root of h squared, which is h, and the square root of two, which is square root of two. So notice that I just went ahead and used Pythagorean theorem to find a in terms of h. So I can put it in for that A, and then I can get my area of the cross section in terms of the hypotenuse H. So let's go ahead and do that. So now I'm gonna rewrite my area formula as one half A squared, and I'm gonna go ahead and put in H over the square root of two, because that's what I found using the Pythagorean theorem. This works out pretty nicely because I'm gonna go ahead and do this pretty quickly. I get um, h squared on the top, right, h squared. And then I get the square root of two squared, which is just two, and then two times the two on the denominator gives me the four. So now my area in terms of h, which is equivalent to this one, is now going to be one, one half a squared, in this case is one half h over square root of two squared, which is h squared over four. So now we're gonna be able to use the cross section and we can always kick out the one fourth if we need to. 
So let's go ahead and start. The first thing we want to do is look at our base that we have that's given to us. We do see at x equals 3, right here, x equals 3, that's when the, the line changes from one with a slope to a constant. We can see that the line here, right, is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, up 4, over 3 with a y-intercept of 0. So here, let's go ahead, up 4 over 3, x with the y-intercept of 0 gives us the line y equals 4 thirds x. And at, from 3 to 6, we can see we get a constant line of y equal 4. So if I were to draw these isosceles triangles, so here's the hypotenuse h, and then there's the thickness, which will be delta x or dx, and there's the a, right, they're the same. Notice that the, the hypotenuse is changing along the line 4 thirds x. So here, this hypotenuse here is going to change from the next triangle I draw along that line, right? So whatever that y value is. But however, notice that the whole base here, the hypotenuse here, if I only plug in that x in for in y, I only get from the x-axis to the line. Notice I'm only getting half of the hypotenuse. So here's the hypotenuse here and I'm only getting half. In order to get the full hypotenuse, that full base, right, of that isosceles triangle, I can go ahead and, that's right, double it, because my base of my object is symmetric about the x-axis. So I can go ahead and double it. So whatever it is that hypotenuse is here from the x-axis to the line, I can double it to get that full base, that full h. Okay, let's go ahead now. I guess we can start. The first thing we'll want to do is go ahead and um, find the area of the cross section. So the area of the cross section section is for area when x is less than three. That's going to be equal to I'll kick out the one fourth, <clears throat> right? I'll kick that out. It's like a one there, right? And then h squared. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. My, my h here is going to be from that x-axis to that line. So four thirds x, right? But that only gives me half of the hypotenuse, right? I have to, that's right, double it. And I'm sure you can see a pattern to these after you do a few of them. All right, so for x, for the area for x greater than 3 but up to 6, we can see that the cross sections here are all going to have the same hypotenuse length, right? So from the x-axis to the function, that is going to be 4. So we're going to have 1 fourth times... 4, but again, that only gives us half of the hypotenuse, right? We need the other half. So, yep, that's right. We're going to double it. And that's squared. So simplifying these, we can go ahead and go ahead and simplify. We get 1 fourth. Um, 4 thirds times 2 is 8 thirds, and 8 thirds squared is 64 ninths. Nines, and then x times x squared equals, here we're going to have 1 fourth times 4 times 2 is 8, and 8 squared is 64. Okay, and just simplifying this a little bit further, we get um, 16 ninths x squared. And here, we're going to go ahead and reduce this out to just 16. OK, so we're all set to tr set up the volume. So let's go ahead and set up the volume. So 
So the volume is going to be in two pieces, right? The first piece will be from 0 to 3 of the area of the cross section, which is 16 ninths x squared dx, plus the other piece from 3 to 6, we get the constant function 16 dx. Okay, and just some simple integration here. We get 16 ninths times the antiderivative of x squared, which is x cubed over 3, from 0 to 3, plus 16 times using that property from chapter 1, 6 minus 3. Okay, great. So here I'm going to go ahead and kick out the 1 third and get 16 27 of 3 cubed minus 0 cubed plus 16 times 6 minus 3 is 3, 16 times 3 is 48. Great, well we can do some quick math here. This is 0 and 3 cubed is 27. And so this 27 will end up reducing out with this denominator. So we're left with 16 plus 48. And if we go ahead and add those together, we get um, 48, 58 plus 6 is 64. And so if we scroll up up here, sorry, right here, we can see that that is the correct answer. So I like to put cubic units and then a nice little box. All right, I hope that helps.